Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom. Good morning to the family, to the tribe. All honor and glory belongs to the Most High. Yah. I was actually sitting out here just enjoying um, Yah's glory and just thinking about some of the things that I've been reading. And some of the things that y'all has been showing as well. You know, Shabbat is a wonderful thing for those of us who partake in the Sabbath day. Um, during its true time on, on the seventh day of the week. It's a beautiful thing. A truly beautiful thing. You get to reflect on on your week, you get to reflect on yourself. You get to commune with the Father and have him come into your household, your family, your homestead, your land, whatever, wherever you are, that's where the Father will be. If you are of his, if you are truly of his, his call, that, that he's called you. And today I was sitting and reflecting on a few things, actually. Um, I was reflecting on deceit, evil, lies, um, anger. Um, anything that would be considered like biblical uncleanness. And I even took a few notes, but... You know, and, and what biblical uncleanness is, is the unclean thoughts, morally impure, evil, vile, having a physical or moral blemish so as to make impure according to the law, statutes, and commandments of the Most High. Yeah. So I was reflecting on that. Just really taking into account my own self, my own walk in life. Um, really reflecting on how I am living for the most high. Not according to what everyone else thinks is right for me or right for me through them and their eyes, but truly what is right because of the Father. What's right according to him? And it's a beautiful thing to, again, be able to reflect on that during Shabbat or the Sabbath day. And to really be able to understand who the Father is to you in your life. And who he is as your creator, you know, um... Man, just, just everything that he is to us, it's a beautiful thing. I mean, just, I think about his glory. I think about his goodness. I think about his corrections and his rebuke. Because all those things are because he loved me. So how, you, you wouldn't be able to truly reflect if you weren't taken into consideration as those things. How many times has the father had to chastise you, rebuke you? And how many times have you truly heeded his word and haven't been filled with vanity and haven't been filled with your own vile uh, ego and pride? Because there's so many of us that are filled and fueled by pride and ego. That thing takes over. And even when you think about it in just from husband to wife, what are the things that lead you through your relationship? What are the things that keep you focused on Yah and not making you moved off of his, his will because you want to fulfill your own? 
as men, we're called to be a certain way to our wives. As men, we're called to be truly the head of our families. And for those of us who have left the old man behind, our old selves, and those who have corrected themselves by, by heeding Yah's word when he has called us. And that calling, and I've said this many times to many brothers, sometimes that calling will leave you destitute. It will leave you in a place where you have to turn to him because he has removed all the obstacles out of your way, out of your path, so that you can truly see and fear him. That has happened to me in my lifetime, and I praise y'all for it. He took me to a place of hmm, hallelujah. He took me to a place of want and need of him. Because I was truly living a life that was filled with so much sin, so much disgust in this. And I'm talking about all the ways of the world, just like we all do in every day, or like we all did when we lived that way. You know, when you live a life of sin, every sin is open and available to you. And that's what you live. It comes to fruition in you. All the demonic ways, they, they work themselves through you and you allow them. Because the only thing you can see is that evil that uncleanness and 98 99 maybe even a hundred percent of the time we want those demons and devils because we think they feel good to us at that time we think that they you know they're, they're giving us something they're providing us something when truly they're taking everything away from us all morality is lost when we live a life of sin. All morality is lost. You don't know who you are when you when you live a sinful lifestyle. Whether it be the streets, drugs, sex, um, alcohol, money, you, you name it, whatever it is, whatever your sin is, they're all the same. They bring you to a place of, of shame and lowness. Matters not what sin. The word talks about how one is the same as all. You know, if you break one, it's like breaking all of them. So no matter what your sin is, it's yours. It's yours. And it's there for a reason. Because you allow it. And you keep convincing yourself that it's okay. You keep convincing yourself that, you know, that sin is all right. You know, you, you can live with it. It's okay. It's not okay. To many, I, I see nowadays, I mean, maybe it's because communication is better or, or the ways of the world, you know, communication is better, but it seems like there's the appearance of an awakening that is going forth. And I pray that's the truth. I pray that we are in a time of an awakening where our people are truly turning back to the Most High Yah. But what I'm also seeing in the trend is that there are those who will call themselves Israel, just as the word says. They call themselves Israel, but they are not Israel. No matter how much they try to look like Israel or fake and pretend to be Israel, they are not. And the truth of that, that scripture comes to life just about every single day. Whether in my own personal life or in your own personal life or in those who 
we know are truly Israel by your works, by your fruit. For those of us who are truly Israel, we can see it. We see through the facade. We see through your lies. We see through your pretending. Truly, honestly, it's not even that hard. Because like the truth, the truth just is, it exists. A lie has to remake itself better and better every single day. I truly pray that my true Israel family, my true Yasharal, continue to see through those who try to attach themselves to us. And that we stand, continue to stand firm on Yah, no matter what, because everybody's going to have their opinions and everybody's going to try to seem like they have a justified um, opinion. But truthfully, their opinion matters nothing. That's the word. Your opinion matters nothing. There's only one whose opinion matters. And when you see those who are unrighteous in the first place, trying to judge those who are truly seeking the Most High Yah, we already know that's just the enemy, the accusations of the enemy, and also the foolishness of the enemy. True Israel is true Israel, no matter what, or who, or where, or why. We just are. That's all that we know. Whether or not you fit into our paradigm or if we fit into yours matters not. All that matters is that we're serving the Most High Yah. That's it. And that's all we seek to do. There are others who have their own agendas. There are others who have their own manipulations and, and their outcome that they're trying to to have and they will try to attach themselves to those who, who they believe that they can manipulate and destroy because truly if they can come in and put their will above yours which is the will of the most high Yah the word says that we you know everything that tries to establish itself every high thing that tries to establish itself against the most high Yah I pray that it be destroyed, whatever it is. That's the same faith that we have every single day. So we matter, we, it doesn't matter to us, you know, of those who may um, try to make a mockery of the ways of Israel or Yashara, true Israel and Yashara. We're all one, it's the same. And we're all one because our father is one. So those who try to make a mockery by trying to assimilate themselves to us and are not of the Most High, are not called by the Most High, can't even see or understand um, what the Most High is doing because, you know, they're not aware of His Word the way that um, His true called are. And again, I care not what you call yourself. Christian, Buddhist, Israelite, Hebrew, I don't care what you call yourself. It's always a function that the Father goes by. That's the fruit. That's the fruit. And the Father makes no mistakes. So for those who try to attach themselves to the true family of Israel, you're always going to be found out. Because your fruit is always unclean. No matter how much you try to hide it.
your fruit, your fruit is always evil and pure. And that can always be seen. Now that doesn't mean that people can't change and won't change because that's that's the goal as well. You know, Yeshua himself, Jesus, as Christians say in, in um, English, he came and said himself that he's only here for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So that puts you in a place of who are you? Who are you? Is the father looking for you? Many of you. No, he's not. Lots of you are trying to look like those who he has called. And, I, and again, when I say those who he has called, they operate a certain way. They may have whatever title, but I'm going to tell you, they operate a certain way. They look to serve him. And that's it. You might have some that still call themselves Christian. Operating way better than those that call themselves Hebrew Israelites. Let that sink in. Now, how do we do that? By following the word. It's a simple thing. Follow the word, not ourselves. Even when I sit and reflect on it and I'm thinking about, you know, man, man to woman, husband to wife, if you will. Um, the power and authority that the father gave to a husband to be able to correct his wife not to be able to it's his duty because if he truly loves her he's looking to save her soul he's looking to make sure that she is presented to the most high with no spot or blemish and I say this to my wife a lot because it's such a beautiful thing it's, it's like a beautiful love story it's one of the greatest is one of the greatest loves out there that you can even think of. Like, when a man loves his wife enough to correct her, not because he's getting some type of reward out of it, because those of us who um, are the head of our households, we know the tremendous amount of pressure that is put upon us as husbands as men, as man, over his household. There's a tremendous amount of pressure. And it's that pressure that keeps us in line with Yah. Because if we didn't have that pressure, if, if we didn't have that overseeing from the Father, we'd still be running dirty like in the streets. We still be running dirty like in our past lives. You know, our past lives, we did whatever we wanted to because there was nobody above us. At least that's what we thought. You know, we thought that everything that we were doing, you know, was in and of ourselves. We were making it happen. But truly, we were being foolish. That's what we were. I'm talking to the men. We were being foolish. But now that we choose and chose to follow after the most high with everything we got there's no way in the world that we now want to take it for granted and allow people to come among us who are not for the father see because you can fool us sometimes and sometimes not for long. You can get past us, but you can't get past the Father. He's that one that will remove you. He's that one that will show the head of the household 
He's going to show who, who you are, truly. He will expose you. Because that man is being exposed himself daily. Every day the Father exposes who we are to ourselves. So that we can correct it. That's rebuke. That's correction. That's the will of the Father. That's his love. That's his love. Because he wants us to be worthy of the kingdom. How can we be worthy of the kingdom if we sell drugs to our, our people? How can we be worthy of the kingdom if we're drunkards all day, every day? Slouch. Just, you know, doing nothing with ourselves. How can we be worthy of the kingdom if we already have masters? Father said, come out of her. His. And those who hear that call, they are coming out. And that's such a true blessing. I love seeing it. I love seeing more people waking up to the absolute truth of the Most High Yah. I know on my journey it took me many different directions. But I was always searching for who he was, even in my own way. And, and even just always having that urge, that call. Like it was, it's always been in my DNA, literally, to want to know him. Even with being so vile and, and unclean, you know, as a as a man, you know, when I was um, in the world, that's my testimony. Because I know if the Father can change me, I know if the Father could change me, He could change anybody. And I know a lot of us say that a, a lot of the time because we know where the Father came and got us. We were in the mud. And I'm not just talking about clean mud. I'm talking about the most disgusting mud you could think of with all type of fecal in it. And that's where we were. It's worse than being in a bottomless pit. In a bottomless pit, at least you're still able to seem like you're clean. You can fool yourself. But when you're in the mud, you're covered in filth. It's in your mouth, in your nose, your ears, your eyes. It is all through you, inside of you. That's filth. That's uncleanness. And I praise y'all for extending his hand to me, such an unclean and filthy person, and pulled me up and started walking me back to life. Because I was living a death sentence. I was living death, just like the walking dead. But nobody can see that. Some can. Sometimes... You affect those around you because of your sin. Because of how unclean and dirty you are. You begin to sling that dirt, mud, and filth all over others. And we destroy our families along with destroying ourselves. We destroy who we are and who we were. We get so far gone, we think there's nothing left. There's nothing, is not even worth living for. Some of us take that plunge and destroy themselves. Many of us have been placed in that direction because the enemy is just having his way with us. I mean, just having his way with us. And he starts calling out in that darkness, calling out in that filth, trying to pull you under the filth, get you deeper in there so that you die. You kill yourself. So you hear those whisperings. I've been there. Plenty of times. But when that light. When that light shines through that darkness. And it comes in your direction. 
when that light shines on your face and you look up and the witness and the testimony of the Most High Yah, His mercy and His grace is before you. There's no denying that. How do you, how do you, there's no denying it. The light destroys the darkness. Absolutely destroys it. The darkness cannot exist in the light. And then it exposes just how deep you are in the mud, in the filth. So as Yah extends his hand to you, Mm, 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 mm. Salvation. There's nothing better than it. a salvation. I praise you, y'all. I praise and honor you. I thank you for remembering me, a vile, unclean person who was stuck in the mud, stuck in all the filth, destroying my family, destroying my home, destroying myself, destroying everything that I've touched. That was me at one point. And I praise Yah for saving my life. There's nothing greater than that. To be pulled up out of the filth and cleaned. Cleaned up. Walked. Because it doesn't mean that it starts just that. I mean, it starts that day. But because you're so filthy and vile and filled with all type of garbage there's a detox and a cleansing process for you you now have to learn how to walk in the will of the most high Yah. you have to now learn how to be of those that he has chosen and you have to learn that where you came from that which you were stuck in was designed for you it was a trap. It's the one that all of the world is stuck in. But because everyone is so busy with trying to push themselves higher than the next person, they don't want to admit and see that they're stuck in the field. They don't want to admit that where they are, morally speaking and physically, where they are is unclean. Themselves are unclean. But because they have such a attitude or such a uh, so much pride in self and that pride in yourself I'm telling you where that's going that goes straight to the enemy that goes to the devil himself you're fueling your own demise and at what price are you willing to give in to sin? At what price are you willing to go? Because I know a lot of people say, you know, oh, I don't lie. You know, well, just little white lies. It's a lie. It's still a lie. 
and it still counts against you. The day of judgment itself, when it comes for you, for you, because it's going to come for us all. But when it comes for you, how many of those white lies have you stacked against yourself? How many of those lies have went unrepented for? And I'm just talking about little tiny white lies. How many of them have stacked up against you? How many times have you sinned or transgressed against the Most High Himself? That's what sin is. Some of you still think sin is something that you do to yourself. Because you put in your you put yourself in a in a place of hierarchy that is above the most high. There's none above Yah. None. English translation, you know, God, as you say in English, but none are above him. None. So how many white lies have stacked against you? How many other sins and transgressions against the Most High have stacked up against you and you've let them go all these years, all this time, and have not repented to the Father? The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now is the time to repent. It's been time. But if this is all the time that you have today, now is the time to repent. Now is the time to truly seek the Most High Yah. In truth, In truth, not just because the time of fooling yourself is over. The Father is calling us all. For one reason or another, the Father is calling us. You might be called because of the things that you're doing in your life. The sins that you're committing every single day and they're okay with you but they're not okay with the Father many would choose to ignore the warnings that are going forth from all of Israel there's so many people now online that are truly putting out good information and truly calling people to heed Yah's word to heed what God is saying to you. Some of you, you can hear what he's saying. You get that tug in your spirit. But you keep ignoring it. One day, that tug ain't going to be there for you no more. One day, that call is not going to be placed for you. Because you have turned your back on the Most High. One day. This is why we should be getting it right now. Living for Him. Not worrying about. Not worrying about what others think. Not worrying about who's justifying who. You know. Are you justified by the Father? He's the greatest witness in your life. There's none greater than him. So when people come against you, just like the word says, especially for, from a man to a woman, it says, um, marvel not when she sins against you. Why? Why should you? 
the offense isn't against you because it says sin. So that transgression, that sin is against the Father. If you are a righteous man, if you are seeking diligently to live the will of the Most High. And again, like I said before in the beginning, most of you are looking to have your own will as the top priority in life. So many of you just blatantly go to church or a synagogue or a mosque or wherever you go as a place of worship. And that's where you put on your greatest show. That's the day that you are just so holy and sanctified. And nowadays, that's like, what, 45 minutes? Hour? Two hours. No matter what time it is, it's not long enough. Because as soon as that time is over, as soon as you leave that place of worship, we turn right back to transgressing against the Father himself. So the life you live is nothing but a lie. Those times when you're in secret, those times when you're in your own darkness, those times when you are alone, that's when the Father is noticing you. He notice you all the time. There's nothing you're doing that's getting by him. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. So whether you think you're the flashiest right now, whether you think that your life is so marvelous because, you know, you drive the latest this and you wear the latest that, you should seek what the Holy Scriptures say about you. So I look all the time to see what the Holy Scriptures say about me. To see if the Father is happy with the direction that I'm going in. It may not please a lot of you, but I'm sure looking to please Him. I could care less what y'all think. But the Father Himself, that's everything to me. So again, for my true Israel, my true Yashara brother, be wary, be aware, and be careful of those who try to attach themselves to you, whether they be male or female. Some of us have these women who try to attach to us as men, and you have to be careful, brothers, because they are wicked. They are wicked. And they truly seek to serve themselves. So you have to be careful. Watch for them. We should be watching with such an eye that, you know, we, we question everything. And why not? Because they're trying to come and attach themselves to us. They're called to be your help meet. So why not question? And take them for everything that they're showing you. Take them for what they say. You better because it's going to bite you in the end. Okoti, same thing for y'all. Watch out for these brothers. Or those that call themselves brothers and are not. Because everything is a function. It's all a function. Where it talks about dysfunction and function. So when you got those who are slightly trying to live outside of that, the Father said to be hot or cold. So how can you be slightly warm or slightly cold? There is no lukewarm. There is no none of that. It said hot or cold. No in between.
You got some who are looking to justify themselves according to the word because they take the word and they bend it so slightly. Subtle, like, like, like Genesis talk about the enemy. He is so subtle in his deception. So are they. They seek to deceive you. Because they do the work of their father, which is the devil. They can't take rebuke. Can't take correction. Because pride and envy is too great in them. So the more that you correct, the more that you rebuke, that evil spirit, you'll see. <laughs> it's going to show out and show off. And then you're going to know you've been right all this time. You're going to know that whatever the Father is showing you about that person, he's always right. The Father don't make any mistakes. None. Hallelujah. Well, I think I talked enough today. I didn't even mean to be this long, to be honest with you. And I had actually wanted to read in the word about um, vows. Vows. Now, I'm in, in the, the vows I'm speaking of, is just as the word speaks of, is the vows that are given in a household between a man and a woman, between a daughter and um, her father. Words, the establishment and the regulation of those vows, those words, things that come off the lips, what we say, what we speak. And I'm going to definitely leave that for another day. That's Numbers chapter 30. The book of Numbers chapter 30, verse 1 through 8, and then verse 10 through 15. With a special emphasis on verse 15. These are things we have to look for as men. These are things that we're commanded to do as men. As husbands and as fathers don't allow your sin to get you so far lost that you don't have that chance to do these things I lost my way with my children before I came into the faith and it was it was my own fault because had I just been diligent with the father I would have been able to teach these same principles to them then while they were young but I was so filled with my own selfish lust my own selfish um, unclean ways that that's all I saw was the sin that was before me it was like being a a, 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 a drug addict you know it's Sin will just take you over completely and you can give completely into it and it will have you, you'll be such a different person you won't even recognize who you are. I beg of those who are looking for the most high, go after them with everything, with reckless abandon, go after the father. That's how I live my life. I want Yah. I've had a taste of everything else. And it just sought to destroy me. So there's no way that I want evil people around me. There's no way I want confusion. Because just like the words say, we know that that is the mark of the devil. No evil. No, no none of that. I want to be submitted to the Father. I want my household submitted to the Father. And that's it. Those who are not won't be here. Period. No excuse for it. Not given no explanation for it. Don't need to. Not told to. It's 
standing firm on y'all in everything in life. Standing firm on y'all in everything in life. So whatever's in me that don't measure up, it shall go. It's going to leave. Whatever's around me that does not fit shall leave. So be it. I thank the Most High Yah for such a blessing in my Asha. She's a she's a wonderful woman. She she's a true blessing and a true 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 gift. How many of us can truly say that about those that we're surrounded around? That they are a blessing to your life. Just reflections of the day. Blessings to y'all, Israel. Blessings. Shabbat Shalom. May you have nothing but increase and abundance in your households. My true Israel family. All over the world. Close and far. May this day be a beautiful reflection unto you. Thank you. Shabbat Shalom.